Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Monday now, November 27th, 2023. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you survived it and all that that implies. I had the flu over Thanksgiving, so that was fantastic. Sarcasm galore there, right? Doing better today. Started feeling bad Tuesday into Wednesday. Got the Tamiflu after being diagnosed with flu A and spent uh, most of the last several days in bed. It's ups and downs. It's really weird. You get like these bursts of energy, and then the fatigue just drags you down like a bunch of lead feet in the ocean or something. That's pretty dreadful sounding, right? But doing better, so yeah, here we are. Um, so let's talk about hurricane season coming to an end. It's uh, Of course, the 30th is the last official day, but I figured we would wrap it up from our side of things here on Monday, Monday the 27th, because we do these updates every Monday. And uh, so we'll take a look at that, how the hurricane season played out. A few stats for you. Not going to dwell on it too much. A couple of reminders of what we will be looking at as we move into 2024. A couple of the very big puzzle pieces that are pretty easy to follow. And then we'll take a look at some lower 48 weather kind of stuff because we're going to be shifting away from hurricane season stuff. Again, every week we'll talk about it. What are we looking at? These big climate pieces of the puzzle, as I said. But more and more, we're going to be fo focusing on looking for big, disruptive winter storms that maybe I can go out or the team and I can go out, whoever's available, and uh, cover such events. And then we get into spring severe weather in a few months. It's not too far away. And we have a really amazing project that I'm going to start talking about in January. So you got to hang around, all right? A really cool thing we're going to start doing next year on the Great Plains. And then before you know it, it'll be six months from now. And hurricane season will be upon us again. It does go by that quickly, trust me, especially as you get older. It's just weird like that. All right. Hey, this was pretty cool. I saw this from over at Flight Radar 24. Yesterday, if you flew, you know, was the busiest day ever at airports in the U.S. TSA saying that over 2.8 million people got screened. It was also an incredibly smooth day of travel. Why? Because of the weather. The weather has such a huge role in everything we do every single day. From what your kids wear to school, eh, sometimes, sometimes they just say, screw it, and they wear what they want. But that notwithstanding, yes, the weather is very impactful. And you think about all those little yellow airplanes on that map there. Thank goodness for the use of scale, right? Do you understand, like, you know, they look like a bunch of ants or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, the weather is very impactful. So at least yesterday, it didn't play a big role at all in disrupting travel. In fact, the tweet goes on to say that fewer than, what does it say, one half of 1% of the over 51,000 flights, that's a lot of flights, fewer than one half of 1% were canceled. Much of that would be weather related. In other words, you can say, the weather gave us a break, which is wonderful. Now, there was some snow over the weekend. I'll show you that, especially in parts of the nation's midsection where they could definitely need it. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, Dr. Phil Klotzbach, he will release his preliminary looks at everything tomorrow, the verification, because it's always being tweaked, right? They update stuff, but the initial verification uh, will come out tomorrow. And I like what he says here. The June, July, and August forecast reasonably well predicted the above normal season that occurred. But going back to April, 13 named storms were forecast, six hurricanes, two majors. We ended up with 20 named storms. And a big reason why we had so many named storms was because the Atlantic Basin was at record warm levels. And the only reason that this number and this number here are not significantly higher, as well as that number there, the ACE, is because, come on, play at home, you know what I'm talking about, this right here, El Nino. Yep, the El Nino did help to cut down on the overall numbers of hurricanes and intense hurricanes, and it also dealt a little bit of a, um, well, dealt us a good hand in terms of steering. Much of the steering pattern was because of El Nino, difficult to explain in a what I want to be a relatively short update today, but the steering pattern was more resembling of an El Nino year, 
All right, so what we did have out there, you think about Lee was very powerful at one time, a Cat 5, and it was able to be steered away from the U.S. Um, and not be a major, major concern. Most of the other activity as well. Of course, Adalia got through. That was in August. It developed in the right location, and uh, it came pretty close to becoming a very, very significant event. As bad as it was, it could have certainly been worse, but it was able to collapse there the last six hours or so before landfall. And then outside of that, again, Maine, of all places, had more time in the cone and whatnot, you know, hurricane shenanigans, we'll just call it, than anywhere else. And once again, for the second year in a row, Louisiana was left alone, which they desperately needed. I have a lot of friends down there. You guys can agree. Whew. You got you got away with it again. Next year, I can't make any promises. But yeah, the El Nino was the uh, the big, I guess the big story overall, huge factor in overall weather and short-term climate across the globe. But we can't ignore the very warm Atlantic Basin relative to average. Of course, these are anomalies. Right there, that word anomalies, the departures from something, and in this case, the departures from the long-term temperature averages. And so the key for next year, I've mentioned this recently in an update, will be what happens with this. We'll put a big question mark, and what happens with this. Those are the biggest drivers, generally, our sea surface temperatures, relative to average, actual temperatures, and gradients. In other words, how are the temperatures distributed? So we will be able to watch this every week, every Monday that I'm around doing this. I might be on a Wednesday or something, whatever, but at least once a week, we're going to look at this and we're going to see how things are tracking. How are things moving along? What's happening with that El Nino and what's happening with sea surface temperature anomalies? And then with that, we can track the subsurface underneath that El Nino, that's what this is, and see how all of that subsurface warmth, all of this right here represents subsurface positive anomalies, there's some negatives there and there, how does all of this start to evolve over time? And then we'll start bringing in things like easterly wind bursts, westerly wind bursts, which ones are dominating, Madden-Julian oscillations, Kelvin waves, more complicated stuff as we get into 2024. All right, so this will be a big key. And then, of course, just looking at simple charts and graphs and other plots like this one from the CFS V2, strongly suggesting we head towards La Nina for next year. And uh, we'll see. There's a lot of different models to look at and plenty of time to do so. So that's part of what we will do in the off season. Every week, we'll take a look at this, and then, of course, we'll start focusing more and more on lower 48 weather because we can, and I can cover much more than I've ever covered before, not just hurricanes. Uh, and, yeah, we'll be on the lookout for that. Maybe a big atmospheric river event, some big snow dumping of a storm system, perhaps for the Sierra at some point. Lake effect snows. I was hoping to get up there for this one that's happening today and tomorrow, but it didn't look until yesterday that it was going to be significant, and I just couldn't drive up there by myself, especially having the flu the last few days. Felt like I might as well wait for a future one because the lakes are still warm, and it's early. It's only November. You know there's more where that came from. But look, we got some snow out here in the Midwest the last few days. There it is on the ground, and um, we're just getting started. Once we get deeper into December, especially January, February, early part of next year with that El Nino in place and a potentially strong subtropical jet cutting across and we get some polar jet action coming in with some ejections of storms out of the southwest all sorts of interesting things could happen in the east the nation's midsection and of course even out west you just never know finally we do need to watch for the possibility of severe weather this off season in Florida these El Nino events do typically create these storm systems that come across. They either head out to sea or they turn into these Miller A events, as we call them, and they go up the coast and you get these big nor'easters. But Florida is in the way of that happening. And you can get some nasty severe weather squall lines, tornadic supercells, that kind of thing, in El Nino years, especially so. So we're going to be watching that carefully in the off season. All right, 
over the next few days, not much going on. Check this out in the northeast right now. There's your lake of, I mean, not just the northeast, but the, uh, the, the Great Lakes region as a whole. Northeast is more up here. But anyway, you get the idea. Pretty calm other than the lake effect snows that are taking place. And if we move this out over the next week and see what happens, lake effect machine in full force from pretty much all five of the Great Lakes. That starts to wind down as we get into Wednesday. And just, I tell you what, that fly to wear thing, the next few days are going to be nice and calm. If you're traveling uh, today, again, it's with the exception of the Great Lakes areas, um, it's going to be a pretty smooth week for travel in terms of any kinds of delays caused by the weather, which is a good thing to see uh, with all the other bad news happening out there. At least the weather is on the positive side for the week ahead. But just moving this on out into time, just drop me out of there if we can, get back to that. Goodbye. Um, not much going on. We get another storm system that develops heavier rain in the lower Mississippi Valley. That's near uh, Thursday into Friday, it seems. But not a lot of cold air. And you can even see, just follow these thicknesses. That's what this is called. Everything's kind of broad and zonal, right? See, it's going generally west to east, very broadly. You don't have these thickness lines just carving in like that. In other words, the jet stream, that doesn't show the jet stream, but I'm just saying the jet stream not plunging into the lower 48 of, of any great uh, ferocity anytime soon. So there's still pretty good warm air flooding the country for the most part. For the most part. you got some exceptions, of course. But that's why this storm system coming through the next few days is mostly, that's why I see all those greens there. And even though I think that shows some severe weather potential, maybe, down south. So, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, but, yeah, a pretty wet and warm signal relative to where it could be. But look out west, the makings of storms coming into the Pacific Northwest. Here's some activity in parts of the Four Corners region. But nothing major league you know, like, get everybody out there, we're all covering it, it's the top story of the day, 5,000 flights a day are canceled, none of that kind of stuff coming up between now and a week from now, at least it doesn't look like. Now look, some of this activity could make it rather unpleasant for flying into and out of Seattle, for example. Yes, you've got your regional issues, possibly, but no big widespread events coming up over the next week. And unlike what people think, no, it doesn't just change without warning. These are pretty big signals here, and I don't see any big surprises. In other words, we're not going to all of a sudden get an unexpected dip of cold air coming out of Canada like that, that nobody saw coming. You don't get an Otis type event where uh, you get a rapidly intensifying hurricane 12 hours before landfall with an Arctic intrusion. You know, that just doesn't happen. That's just a different set of synoptics. So this pattern is pretty much locked in. Details on who might see snow. It rained and it didn't look like it was going to rain. That's not what I'm talking about. This is a pretty benign pattern as we head into the first part of December. All right? So let's take it because you know how ugly things can get. And when they get there, you can bet I'll be out there wherever that might be uh, maybe with one of our team members, depending on who's available, covering such calamities. But at least for now, nothing coming up. All right, so all the years I've been doing this, I've always wanted to do a calendar. And I've always thought about it in December. And it's like, oh, it's too late, you know, because it takes time to print them, design them, all that good stuff. And this year, I was ahead of the game, and I'm ready. Got it right here. That's it. That is the official 2024, very first ever wall calendar. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, one of the pictures from July. I don't want to give too much away. There's a few thumbnail shots down there. I think there's nine of the 12 pictures. But we do have a calendar. It is available for purchase. It is not just hurricanes, because we cover more than just hurricanes. It's basically some really unique archival old still images, photographs, maybe a drone still image capture, whatever, video capture, doesn't matter. I was able to piece it all together so that each month has a photograph related to it that was relevant to that month. So January 
is that one right there that says thickly settled, for example. What the heck does that even mean? Well, you got to get the calendar, and there's a little thing on there on the, um, you'll see, it tells you what it is, the little caption. So anyway, we got a calendar. It is available. It's only 20 bucks, and that includes shipping. So it's not $20 and then $8.95 for shipping. Uh, I can put them in these guys right here, so they're very easy to mail. Cost, I don't know, I think probably two bucks or something like that to mail, so no big deal at all. And uh, I just want people to get them. I don't have thousands of them because they're very expensive to produce. But if you want one, scroll down on this page. I'll put a link to it in the description and click that buy now. Now, there's some weird glitch with PayPal that it still will m probably say tracking map once you do the buy now. Don't let that spook you. It's only 20 bucks. That part's correct. And um, the tracking map part is just something in the code. I'm going to get my... Uh, some help from one of my developers to try to figure that out. But yes, we do have a calendar. It's pretty cool. I'm proud of it. Uh, we're going to make it an annual thing and um, see what happens with it. They're pretty pretty popular this time of year, the weather calendars. And this one's unique from us here at Hurricane Track. Again, a historical look back at different photos and still images and even a radar scope. Why would that be in there? Well, again, you got to get the calendar and you'll understand. It's sort of a, a, a look back in time through the hurricane highway, as we call it. Um, so it's not just the weather from this year. All right? Beautiful little calendar. I got it done from Uprinting. Fully paid customer, by the way. That's not an endorsement. I mean, I it did great, so I will endorse it. They did a good job, but they didn't give me a discount or anything like that. Full paying customer. Uprinting did a good job. I'm really happy with those calendars. I'm going to give a few away to some of my friends and family because uh, they deserve it. But the rest of you, if you want to buy one, it makes a great Christmas present from uh, us at Hurricane Track, something unique and different, all right? All right, well, I hope all of you all are feeling well. I'm doing a lot better, as you can tell. I got my energy back, so that's great. Hopefully, that's the end of it, and I can't catch anything else at this point. <laughs> Knock on wood, right? You guys have a great rest of your week and uh, the rest of the month of November. And um, I think that'll just about do it. As always, thanks for tuning in from all of us at Hurricane Track, the whole back-end team, all of us on Patreon, our big old family here. We appreciate you tuning in and supporting what we do just by watching the video. It means a lot to us. Uh, let's do it again in about a week, shall we? Very good. I'll see you next Monday.